What's going on guys? John Elder here from Codemy.com and in this video, we're going to start to look at building Python GUI apps with Kivi. Alright guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to start to look at Kivi. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where I have dozens of courses with hundreds of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube1 to get $30 off membership with all my courses, videos, and books for one time fee of just $49, which is insanely cheap. Okay, you guys have been asking for this for a long time, but now we're finally going to start to learn Kivi for Python. And if you're not familiar, Kivi is a sort of cross-platform GUI app building thing, right? So Kivi apps work great on everything. They work on you know Windows, Mac, Linux, uh, Android, everything. They're great cross-platform things. You build it once, it works everywhere, and it's really cool. So in this video, we're just gonna sort of start to talk about it. We're gonna install it for Windows and build this very, very simple just starter app that just says hello world in the middle of it, just to get our feet wet and get started. From here on out, we're gonna build out this playlist and do, I don't know, two or three videos on Kivi every week and should be a lot of fun. So let's go ahead and close this and let's head over to Google and let's just type Kivi. And you can see here's kivi.org, this is the website. And you're gonna wanna check this website out just a little bit. We're not gonna spend a lot of time here, but click on documentation here. And then you can come down here to getting started. And we want installation. Now, the problem with Kivi right off the bat is it's kinda tricky to install and it's different for every platform that you're gonna develop on. So I'm gonna be working on Windows. So in this video, we're gonna install for Windows. If you guys really need help installing this on Mac, let me know and I'll do a video on Mac as well. But you can see we've got uh, Windows, Mac, Linux, Raspberry Pi, and Android. And so we're gonna click here to install on Windows. Now this is kivi.org slash docs slash stable slash installation slash installation dash windows dot HTML. And you can see it's got instructions for if you're using Anaconda. I'm just using regular old uh, Python, which is perfectly fine, so we don't need that. So let's come down here. We want the stable release, and it says ensure you have the latest pip and all that good stuff installed. Of course we do, or I'm gonna assume we do. Uh, like I said, I'm gonna assume that you already have Python installed on your computer. If you don't, then go ahead and check the channel. I've got tons of videos on installing Python. I'm gonna be using the Sublime Text Editor and the Git Bash Terminal as always. Also, if you don't have those installed, and don't know how to install them, check my channel. I've got tons of videos on how to do that. Now we're gonna wanna install, we're gonna wanna create a virtual environment. So let's do that right off the bat. So I've opened a Git Bash terminal, and the first thing we wanna do is create a directory where we're gonna hold all of our Kivi files and stuff. So let's go mkdir, and I wanna put this in my C drive, and I'm gonna call this Kivi uh, GUI. Call it anything you want, really. And now we wanna move into that directory, so cd, change directory into C Kivi GUI. And you can see here we are, now we're in there. And if we type ls, there's nothing in this directory. So the first thing we wanna do is create a virtual environment. So I'm gonna go Python dash M V E N V stands for virtual environment. And now let's name this thing. And I'm gonna just name it vert, short for virtual. This will spin up our virtual environment. Okay, now if we type in ls, we can see there's this vert directory. So to turn this on, I'm gonna type source vert scripts activate okay and now you can see when we hit enter a bunch of times we see this, this vert above our terminal prompt here right that means our virtual environment has been turned on so now we can pip freeze to see what has been installed inside of our virtual environment python wise and it returns nothing so there's nothing that's been installed python wise into our virtual environment but now we can start to install kivi so let's head back over here and these are the instructions for what we just did for the virtual environment stuff. I changed them around a little bit, but basically the same thing, we're setting up a virtual environment. So now we need to install the dis the dependencies. And Kivi comes with all kinds of stuff that we're gonna need. And so we're just gonna go ahead and install these things. So I'm gonna copy each of these, highlight, copy, head back over to our terminal, and right click, paste, enter. It's collecting all the stuff. And while it's doing its thing, we can come back here and copy this one. And you'll notice it has a little note here. If you encounter a memory error while installing, uh, then you can use this no cache dir option. You just slap this little flag at the end of this thing, put a space and then the flag, uh, and that should be fine. It also says if you have Python 3.5 or up, which you probably should be, we're on what, 3.9 by now, something like that. Uh, you can do this instead of this, but we don't really care right now. We're just gonna do the defaults. 
So, okay, let's copy this one. That other one should be done by now, hopefully. Okay, so now we can paste in the next one, pip m python dash m pip install kivi depths g streamer point zero point one and while it does its thing we can come back here and look at the website and so now we've got the dependencies the things that kivi needs to run now we can just install kivi itself so i'm going to copy this and this is going to install kivi version 1.11.1 if this changes by the time you watch this video whatever uh, no big deal just go ahead and install whatever they're recommending as the latest version all right so I'm going to go ahead and clear the screen and then let's paste in this one. So pip, so Python dash M pip install Kivi equals 1.11.1. And so it's collecting Kivi and it's doing all the things and you can see it's grabbing all kinds of other stuff too. So, all right, now let's pip freeze just to see what everything has been installed here. And you can see now we've got a bunch of stuff installed inside our virtual environment. And this has only been installed inside of our virtual environment. So you can see there's some different things, Kiwi Garden, and let's see, PyWin32, Kiwi itself right there. Okay, so now if we type in ls, there's still nothing else in here but our virtual environment stuff, and we're good to go. So that's pretty much all we need to install Kiwi. Now let's just build a very, very simple little app just to get our feet wet here, and so, I'm gonna come up here and I've opened a Sublime Text Editor file. So let's go to File, Save As, and we wanna to navigate to our C drive. So I'm gonna to go to this PC, C, find our Kivi directory that we created earlier. So that was Kivi GUI right there. And inside of here, I'm just gonna save this as hello.py. And Kivi files are Python files, so they all end in .py. So right off the bat, let's import Kivi. And then we also, from kivi.app, oops, we wanna import app. Oops, that needs to be capital A, there we go. And then finally from kivi.uix.label, we wanna import label. And oops, every time I hit enter, it wants to lowercase those. Make sure these are both uppercase, right? So I'm not gonna get into what all this stuff is right now. In this video, we're just sort of getting this set, set up and doing a very, very basic app. But with Kivi, you're importing lots of stuff all the time. You can see we wanna do a little label, so we have to import the label thing from the Kivi UIX thing, right? And I know we imported Kivi here, so you're like, oh, don't I get everything? Well, we still need to import individual things. It's just how this works. So let's start off by creating a class, and I'm gonna call this my app. And this inherits app, and that comes from up here. So the app is the sort of main, it's our app, right? It's our main thing. So we're gonna create a class of app. Now inside of here, we wanna define build, and we wanna pass self. And then what do we wanna do? Well, let's return a label, and we want the text to equal, let's say, hello world, and that's good. So that's our basic app. So now we need to sort of um, instantiate this thing, and so let's go if underscore underscore name underscore underscore, equals double equal to sign and then we want underscore underscore main underscore underscore and then we want to run my app and we dot run this all right so this is the bare bones sort of thing that you need to get a very basic app running in kivi we create a class uh, we can set a label we're getting this label right here from this guy right here that we imported and then here we're just running it basically. So let's go ahead and save this, hello.py. Let's head back over to our terminal, make sure we're in this directory. So let's clear the screen and let's run this. So Python, hello.py. If you're on a Mac, I think it's kivi, hello.py. Uh, and you can see, boom, it's doing all kinds of stuff here, which is a little weird. And then boom, we get our app. And this is just a very basic app. It says hello world in tiny little letters and it works. So if you see that, congratulations, you got your first kivi app up and running. Uh, we can play around with this just a little bit. Like I said, I don't want to get into great detail on what all this stuff is, but we can give this a font underscore size equals, and let's say 72, make the font really big. We can come back over here and run this guy again. And now our text is really big, right? And you see, if we resize this, our text sort of resizes as well. It doesn't resize, but it moves, right? So this is sort of dynamically 
changing this app. If this was Kinter and we went like this, the hello world text would be off the screen. It wouldn't sort of dynamically move the text so that it's always in the center. So right away, Kivi is looking better than like a basic Kinter app and uh, pretty cool. So that's how to install Kivi on Windows. Not that difficult. Uh, I definitely suggest that you use a virtual environment. Anytime you do anything with Python, you should really create a virtual environment. And especially with Kivi, because you know, there's lots of dependencies and things that are installed with Kibi and to have those all sort of corralled inside of a virtual environment is always going to be better in case you need to update different versions of the dependencies or if you need to update Kibi itself to a later version, much easier to do that inside of a virtual environment than to just have it in the general area of your computer and who knows what it's knocking against with other things that are installed. So. Uh, pretty cool and pretty easy. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out Codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube one to get $30 off membership. So you pay just $49 to access all my courses, over 47 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best-selling coding books. Join over 100,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from Codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.